So I'm going to give you a snapshot in the day of a life of a person who is fighting, fighting for their life right now. So there's a young lady who went to the hospital because she couldn't breathe because her cancer was growing, metastasizing, and she also was feeling bloated, um, didn't have a CPAP machine, didn't know about fruit and all that stuff. And so she is, you know, was a little scared that she couldn't breathe. So she was, she went to the hospital. Well, she's in stage four cancer. Um, they, you know, they were going to, they were draining fluids out of her. They were going to do an operation to remove the, the cancer, but they opted not to do that. So they did one last drain and they're like, okay, we can't do anything more for you. And so she was trying to figure out, well, I can get a reclining bed. I can get a CPAP machine because what initially brought me to the hospital to begin with was the fact that I'm fighting for my life and, you know, I'm scared that I can't breathe. You know, what could they do for me? So she was using the hospital as a last hurrah because, you know, healing is difficult um, and you get scared in the process if you don't have other apparatuses to help you through the process. No different than when you are utilizing your prescription drugs as you are healing and transitioning off of them. So that's kind of like what goes on when someone is at the 11th hour trying to fight staying alive at the 11th hour with cancer. So right now she's in the hospital, she's in oncology. Her nurses are mentioning palliative care. And you know what happens after palliative care, then there is hospice. Well, they already put that out there in the mix. She requested a CPAP, they wouldn't give it to her. So right now, as we are talking, she is drinking the J juice and she is coughing up now all the mucus. So she is turning her lines of defense, her first lines of defense, her mucus, the coughing and the sneezing are now finally online. And she has to now go through the energy of doing the waterfalls, yes, and also expelling. And she's doing that in the hospital right now because they can't do anything more for her. They can't do anything more for her. She already went through the chemo and the radiation and it basically blasted every single thing out of her gut. So she noticed a difference between prior to the radiation and the chemo and then after the radiation and chemo. So guess what she's doing? She's doing Julie Juice as the last hurrah because there is nothing else for her that the system can do. And that's what you guys are in for if you allow yourself to get to such a point where you get the luxury of getting cancer, but if you don't to neutralize those cancer cells and you're trying to turn to the industry to do all the shortcuts, there will be a point where there'll be a very difficult return. Not that it's impossible, but you would now have to know what it takes to fight for your life. And so I tell you, you know, I don't envy that her battle because it's going to be a very long battle. When you have to, when you're doing waterfalls and, you know, you're obese, yes, and you have cancer in your gut um, and, you know, you're coughing and you're focusing on breathing and you're blowing your nose, that's a lot of fight. And you still have to eat, too, to help also replenish and regenerate. And so I'm telling you, you don't want to end up this way, you guys. That's why I am the way I am. And some of you are so offended by the fact that I'm speaking to your situation that you can't even look at the possibility that, yeah, you know, your situation is paving the way for this scenario. You don't want to look at it, fine. That's why you block people. That's why you defriend. But even defriending doesn't stop you from peeking at their Facebook at any point in time. But you wanted to make a point. You unfriended. But if my truth if my knowledge and experience based upon just, you know, not only anecdotal, but then also what other people have told me as far as their situation, if that offends you and you don't see anything wrong with your lifestyle, then it shouldn't really offend you. And so, you know, I don't want to end up at that type of situation. I don't want anyone in my world to end up in that type of situation. 
okay? Because that's a long road. Not that it's impossible, but it's a long road to pull yourself up out of that situation, that type of fight. And who's to say what they're going to do when, you know, what in the hospital? I mean, maybe, who knows? Okay, so, you know, the fact that she's in the hospital, that's great, but will they give her any oxygen if she asks for it? They're like, oh, we're not going to give you a CPAP machine. Why do they give her a CPAP machine? To help her breathe in between her waterfalls and whatever else. So she could sleep. So she could feel comfortable sleeping and knowing that something else is going to help her open up her lungs while she's sleeping. Because you have to sleep too. But why didn't they give her a CPAP machine when she's at the hospital? And so, you know, once you enter yourself into a hospital, you know, for, you know, in oncology and palliative care, they are not going to waste any resources on you if they already deem you as, as a lost cause. And I remember, she, you know, she was crying. She was just like, oh, my God. They were, and they were telling me I was a lost. That They were telling me that they can do nothing for me. She said she saw the gleam in their eyes. She said she, she felt that they were actually relishing telling the person. Like, they were soaking up that emotion because she was crying. That's the kind of shit with these doctors and nurses in oncology. And then every other nurse and doctor following up to oncology. Then they start saying, well, it's too late. Their bedside manner becomes so, like, aggressive if you don't follow their directives. Just like that nurse that said to that patient, well, it's too late when they were asking for a vaccine or something. And so I'm telling you, you're not dealing with a very kosher organization. But I want you to understand from this experience what you're in for if you don't change the way you, you change your belief system and your behaviors. Not everybody's lucky enough to just disappear like that. But do you really want to just disappear like that? Not disappear like literally to where you have just basically vital organs shut down and you just die? Or do you want to have the luxury of the indicators but you don't want the indicators to be so aggressively... Um, extreme that it's such a fight that you don't know if you can win the fight it'll be a scary fight you don't want to end up like that you want to know that the indicators you have now while you're actually were you know able to walk from point a to point b and you don't have an issue with sleeping you don't have an issue of feeding yourself and clothing yourself and taking a shower you want to nip that shit in the bud so you don't end up like that But again, I know that this information is going to fall on a lot of deaf ears because remember, it's all about now, it's about the distractions, about now, and about making the money and all the activism. But I actually, you know, uh, I, uh, I recommend that you go, if you can, wear a mask, go walk into an oncology unit, go walk around the hospital and, and see if they allow you. And see where you're going to end up if you don't change your ways. I'm serious. You need to not just visit the labor and delivery and the NICU and the nursery. Go look at the different um, units in the hospital that deal with cancer, disease, and chronic illness. Go see what, what's in your future if you don't change your ways because that's what's in your future. Outpatient care is just a stepping stone to inpatient care. And there is an order of operations within a hospital system as well as all the different therapies. So, it is what it is, but I just want you to kind of bring some logic into your world. And if I'm scaring the crap out of you and all that stuff, well, I'm glad. Because at some point, somebody must kind of jolt you into reality. Because it ain't going to be your friends. It's not going to be your mom or your dad because they're already out there on their way out the door. It's not going to be your best friend because they're too afraid to challenge you or less lose their friendship. It's not going to be your co-workers. They won't up over, uh, what is it, overstep their boundaries. 
Something like this information will come from a complete freaking stranger that has no relationship to you, that feels no fear of losing any kind of face with you. That's where you're going to get actually the, probably the facts and the truth that you probably need to hear. The facts and the truth will not come from your friends and family. Because they will either enable you and reinforce your belief systems or you'll be too afraid, they'll be too afraid to challenge the shit out of you. So it'll come from someone who really does not have a deep relationship with you because they will risk you hating them for bringing up things that you don't want to hear. And so I've taken that on to be that person because I've already put myself in an island. I already know how I'm viewed out there. I already know. So I don't even care. So that gives me so much freedom just to speak it all and give those that are willing to hear the actual, well, my truth and the potential of where and the logic of where you're potentially going to end up if you don't change the way in which you do things. Okay. Remember, you always have the power to unfollow. And if you are so offended, it's because you decided not to unfollow and you just couldn't help but watch my information and then you were just so offended. <laughs> Bye.